So I've had the opportunity now to test out the upcoming Sony a7S III, and I wanted to put it through a real world production test, just like we did with the Canon EOS R5. So I reached out to my good friend, director cinematographer, Lucas Colombo, to help me put this together and see if the Sony a7S III is a great camera for filmmakers. Today we're playing and testing with the Sony a7S III. Pretty cool. We just finished up some tests on the R5 and the R6. Now let's put this one to the test. Everyone's talking about this for video. It seems like it might be better for video. So we're gonna do a little poker scene setup, kind of cinematic low light, lit by an oil lamp right here. Um, we'll have haze to make it look magical and kind of a really intense scene where these guys are gnarly, dirty guys are playing poker and this lovely lady comes in and tries to join them and kind of takes all their money. In addition, we also wanted to compare the a7S III with the Canon EOS R5. So I collaborated with my good friend Potato Jet so that we can do the side-by-side -side comparison. If you guys are interested in watching that video, there will be a link down below to his channel, so make sure to check that out. In order to get the Sony a7S III ready to film on a production like this, we had to rig it up with the necessary accessories that you would normally see on a professional set. The foundation of this setup is the Condor Blue Cage because it allows us to mount all of the extra gear that we would need. For example, a V-mount battery, a Teradek wireless transmitter, you can also mount a follow focus unit, and a Ninja 5 for external recording. And since Condor Blue is a channel sponsor, they hooked us up with all of their accessories, like the mini quick release plates, the Cine Magic Arm, their braided HDMI cable, their new Sony E-mount body cap, and perhaps my favorite, their remote trigger top hand. This allows you to start and stop recording on the camera using the top push button, which reminds me of the DSMC2 top handle from RED. Condor Blue has a bunch of accessories for Sony Alpha cameras and also the upcoming Sony a7S III. So if you guys wanna support a company that cares about small filmmakers and creators, make sure to check out Condor Blue. I'm gonna leave everything linked down below that we are using on this shoot. In this scene, we wanted to test out the low light capability of the Sony a7S III. After all, this is a low light monster. Now for lighting, what Lucas decided to do is use one china ball right at the center of the table to illuminate all of the actors. This gave the scene a very moody look and at the same time, a glimpse of the dynamic range of the Sony a7S III. Hey guys, my name is Nick Jansen. I'm the gaffer on this set, and for this set, Lucas really wanted to light the whole scene in a way where we wouldn't have to move the lights at all that much. So we went with the china ball, we rigged it up top to the uh, attic ceiling with just some grip clips and running a stinger to a china ball, hanging it right above the actors, and then we duped off all these windows here, and then we went back later and we just rigged up and tore open a bit of the duvetine to let some light leak through. We wanted to record in the highest quality available, and because ProRes RAW wasn't an option yet, we ended up using 4K ProRes HQ using an Atomos Ninja 5, and then we also shot everything using S-Log3 to give us the most latitude in post. We also adapted a PL mount so that we can use the same master build lenses that we used on the Canon EOS R5 shoot. These lenses are gorgeous, and they will give us the look that we wanted. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you that scene that we filmed using the Sony a7S III. Straight, gentlemen. Flush. God damn it. Oh, looks like it ain't your night tonight, boys. Yeah, again. What'd you say? Are you deaf? Shut your mouth. Well, you must be lost, Missy. What's the buy-in, gentlemen? If you have to ask, maybe you shouldn't be here. I'm just a girl looking to play. Whatever it is, I'm good for it. You say you and me, we make a little side wager. I'm listening. 
one hand, one hand only. I win, you pick up and leave all that pretty little money on the table, and I never see that sweet face of yours again. And if I win? If you win. I'll double the pot. And the only time you'll see me is in your dreams. Are you two ready to play yet? Maybe y'all need some privacy. <laughs> Sweet dreams, baby. You know, I don't dream much. Full house. Straight flush. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Fine hand, you played it real well. Let me help you out here. All this. You! Now, how about everybody just take it easy? We're all here to have a friendly little game of five card. You set me up. I think you should go now. Yeah. Before you go, I think you might be forgetting something. So let's go ahead and talk about what happened on set. So unlike the Canon EOS R5, the Sony A7S III never broke a sweat. Now I know some people are gonna say, well of course Armando, you recorded externally to an Atomos Ninja 5. And to that I say yes. However, when we did test it out at Potato Jet's house using an incubator at over 100 degrees, internal recording, it's still never overheated. We got Woo! It's freaking hot. And you know the best part? The camera never overheated. Oh, it's hot, man. Is drenched. When I brought the footage into Adobe Premiere and I started color grading, I was blown away at how much I can really push the image. This has been a big gripe for me on older Sony Alpha cameras. The 8-bit codec is just too weak, but this camera changes that. We were also very impressed with the dynamic range of the Sony a7S III. In fact, if you wanna see how it compares to the Canon EOS R5, make sure to check out the video collaboration that I did with Potato Jet. It's actually pretty mind blowing. Something else that shocked me was actually the colors. I mean, not quite Venice, of course, but the gap is definitely getting much closer. In fact, I would say that you could intercut A7S III footage with Venice and it would be very hard to tell the difference. The A7S III performed excellent on set and was very reliable. They took a different approach from Canon and rather than focusing on the case, they actually played it safe and they took the feedback and criticism that they've been receiving for years and improved their camera to make it better. For example, adding a flip out display, simplifying their menu system, making it more user friendly, improving the color signs, high frame rate options, even better internal and external record options like being able to get 16 bit raw using an Atomos Ninja 5. And here's the thing, I know that the Sony A7S III can't record above 4K. That's okay, because it does everything well and reliably. At the end of the day, if the camera can't keep up with the production, it's probably best to look at other options. And the Sony A7S III does not disappoint. We have more content coming soon on the Sony A7S III, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you guys don't miss out on that video. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching, and you will catch me in the next one. Adios. My name is Harrison Bliss. I'm the best boy electric on this shoot today. Right now I'm actually rigging up a strong arm for our practical space light and uh, getting it on the C-stand.
Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jake. I was in charge of the behind the scenes photos today on set. This isn't my first time working with Mondo and it definitely won't be my last. My name is Mariah Harrison and I'm the costume designer for this project. This project was a little challenging because we had to whip everything together in less than 12 hours. So I had to be really creative with sourcing period costumes. Hey, how you doing? I'm Marcus Rico, sound mixer, doing sound here for a Sony camera test. And so far, so good. Hey, howdy guys. Connor McCaskill, the BTS videographer and also editor. We're just kind of wrapping up the edit right now. Everything's looking great. I really hope that you all really enjoyed this. It definitely took a lot of work to get everybody together to make this production happen. And I think it came out beautifully. So look at this, Gene shows up on set. This is how boss he is. He shows up on set with a C300 Mark III. And look at this. If this isn't like the biggest flex, hold on, Sony. <laughs> Come on, dude. What is this? Yeah, these are our daily drivers. So Sam is like his BTS uh, shooter, and he dual wields all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that what you do? You know it, man. Yeah, you have one here, and then you have one, one here, one, one here. Sometimes I wear a GoPro on my chest. Dude, Everything. Connor, listen, you gotta be like this guy. 